watching Channel 461, where it's at, and this is May Day. I am Lisa, and this is, of course, Mr Nigel May. Hello, how are you doing? Yes, it's May Day, it's Sunday afternoon, it's where it's at, Channel 461. We're here live in the Trocadero in Piccadilly in London, and we are going to be bluffing and blagging our way through this afternoon, because that's the theme of our show, and we've got loads of great things for you. We certainly, certainly have. We've got some very special guests. We have yes. Bex and Joel in the studio. They are from the Channel 4 series Around the World. Yeah. And they <laughs> The ultimate black. We have got great music this afternoon from these ladies on stage here. They are Urban Chaos. They're going to be performing soon. Plus, we have Lazenby live in the studio. Oh, yes. Yeah. Lisa and I are going to be looking at the magazines this week with our weekly review of the papers in Magbag. And, of course, we have Ollie Rawlings in, as usual. Oh. He's lovely. Oh, yes. And we're going to have Bums on Seats reviewing the latest DVDs and videos. Oh, yes, there's loads. Giggling oh, away. Oh, 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 too excited. We're going to be also having our showbiz gossip this week with the lovely Tanya from Esquire magazine because Katie's swanning herself in Greece this week. And, of course, right, sun. lovely, isn't it? Oh, no. And how can I forget that we have the lovely Kevin Leo singing his way through yeah. today. Oh. <laughs> And he's going to be with you for Pop Palette. Oh, yes, Mr Loverman himself. Also this afternoon, I'm going to be looking at the, great, uh, the latest cinema releases in Movie Mania with Eva Maloney. And as it's May Day, we're going to have a challenge, but we don't know what it is we yet, so we're going to be clue. surprised But you're going to see all this afternoon on, on May Day. Day. <laughs> Let's go. We're live right through till nine o'clock tonight in the Chocadero down the West End. So come on down. Oh, yes. You've got lots of people. We've got all five hours of, five hours of show. It's going to be completely radio rental this afternoon. We are fully interactive. <laughs> Don't forget that as well. If you want to get in touch with us, you can. You can phone us. The number is 0870 60 60 567. Or you can fax us on 0870 60 60 568. Or if you want to send us one of those little computer email things, you can do that as well. The number is studio at where it's dot at. Now, today we've got a blagging and blagging bluffing day going on. Oh yes, we've got a lady coming in later to tell us about the ultimate blag that she did. The it's like blag. She went, well, I'm not even going to say what it is, it's so good, but stay tuned for that. But tell me about you, because I know that you're just the master of I, blagging, I've, I've blagged a few freebies, things holidays, in my time. gifts, a lot. Tell um, me your ultimate one. All right, I've got two ultimate ones. I once pretended that I knew all about Pokemon and I managed to blag myself a week's press trip to Japan. How old are you, Whoa. Nigel? Uh, how old am I? I'm... <laughs> And you made out that you knew all about Pokemon. I just walked around Japan for a weekend, though. like Pikachu, Pikachu, and they were like convinced it was great, so no problem. And you went to Japan? Yeah, I went to Japan. And, and I what also was your planned one? a trip to Egypt as well, How? which was great. I just phoned up the tourist board and said, Can I do a feature for a magazine on Egypt? And they were like, Yeah, great. So I went off to discover the pyramids. And did you? Or yeah. did you just go and No, on I did. Holiday? I did the feature and I was good to my word, but it was great. But do you want some music? Yes! Yeah. Yeah. You do. All right, we're going to have some live music with Urban Chaos performing their song, Your Shout. Can you please make some noise for Urban oh, Chaos? Yeah. Yeah.
let me make myself the envy of every guy in the studio and squidge in the middle of you lovely ladies here. How great was that? That was superb. You had some dancing yeah. away in the studio. Let me get this right. We've got Jo. Yes, hello. We've got Maria. <laughs> hello. We've got Natalie. Hello. And we've got Gemma. Gemma, hello. Wait. <laughs> How long have you guys been? Oh, you guys, you girls, been together? We've been together for six months as a group. I mean, that was a very slick little routine. Well, that thank you. Was amazing. <laughs> Honestly, it was super. Oh, no, no. No, so how do you all know each other? Are you friends from school? Or? Gemma and I were friends originally. And we made we got us in. <laughs> they roped us in, you see. Well, they met her because they went to see her in a she production of Grease. She was standing yes. there. Hey. <laughs> and I just met them at Pineapple Studios, just dancing about. I was their drinking partners for after we finished. <laughs> <laughs> see, I thought there was quite a Madonna feel to that song. It sounded really? like oh. Holiday and all of that was oh, great. Yeah. Now I thought it was lovely. Yeah. It's like, I mean, is that going to be released? I mean, are we going to hear that oh, soon? Because so. I think yeah. it should yeah, be. Yeah, definitely. In a couple couple end of the summer, yeah. I mean, yeah. you girls are after deal at the moment. Moment, aren't you? Yes, yes. we're in negotiations yeah. at the moment. These girls are deal. They should have listened to you before for again later in the show. We are, yeah? yes. They're going to be with us all afternoon on May Day, but we are talking blagging. So this afternoon, oh, this afternoon, earlier this week, we'd sent somebody out to go blagging for us. When you want to blag something, what do you want to blag first of all? Food. So we sent our Jamie <laughs> Oliver reporter out, Ruby Shepherd, do you really? want food? To the sandwich show, and this is what she got up to. It's lunchtime and I'm absolutely starving. This has got to be my best place in London to get a sandwich. Well, the sandwich show is all about the sandwich industry in London. No, no, no. People just come here for a good feed, surely. What's out there for me to eat, then? We've got crisps, drinks, literally everything that they could want. Yeah, all under one roof. We've been around the show and we've picked all the best stuff out there. Yeah, and we just take things off everybody. I think there's, there's, some, there's some lovely cheeses out there. Lush tomatoes, well. Well. some lush tomatoes, some yeah. great Parma ham, and, and there's some great Lancashire ham, and some great Yorkshire ham, and more Lancashire ham. sausages, English right sausages. In fact, if you're hungry, that's the place to be. So, on with the tastings.
Total Sandwich Show well worth it, especially now because everyone's packing up and they're giving me all their songs. My mates are going to be lovely. I'm totally stuck because I'm eating so many sandwiches, but I think I've got room for one more thing. This cake looks seriously scrumptious. There you go, there was enough food there to sink a ship and feed a nation. Mm, feed me. I went, only for about half an hour there. <laughs> okay, there you go, blagging sandwiches there. Um, every week on May Day, we have a challenge. This week, we are completely in the dark as to what the challenge is, we aren't we? We have But we do know it has something to do with this man that is sat over here. His name is David Hodgson. Hi, David. But we don't know why he's here. We know he has something, he's an expert in a certain field, but we're not sure what it is. But apparently, a voice from the gods is now going to set our challenge. Nigel and Lisa. This is your director speaking. Hey. Your challenge today is to correctly identify which field David Hodgson works in. Is it law, wine, or astrology fortune telling? So which of these three bluffers guys does he not need? Law, so astrology, and wine tasting. Pretty eclectic mix. And we've got some... three books here. See, now one of these you obviously haven't had to read, have you? That's right. Because you are an expert, expert. in law, uh -huh. wine, or astrology. OK, well, we've got to obviously ask some questions to find out whether you are bluffing or whether you're telling the truth. So let's start with law, yeah? Let's start with law. OK, okay. Lisa, far away. David, David, <laughs> how, how did you get into law? I grew up in Australia and um, uh, through most of my um, adolescence we were going through one of the longest court cases in history, which was the um, Azaria Chamberlain case. Do you remember the dingo still yeah. Yeah. having the baby? I do. Um, it was fascinating, incorrectly convicted, nine years released um, from prison, uh, um, declared, uh, declared innocent of the crime. And um, I was, was, it just really got into my system, so I decided to study law and then practice. How long do you have to study? How many years studying does it take to become a qualified well, lawyer? It, it basically, it takes five, and I studied law in, in Sydney and Australia. And uh, after that, you, you just add on courses for specialising. Hmm. And what type of law do you practice? I practice criminal law. OK, so you're going to know everything about the law. Now, I'm going to try and trick you here. S Club 7, the boys from S Club 7 were caught recently, weren't they, like smoking a joint in the street? Yeah. What were they guilty of? They were guilty of uh, possessing marijuana. And what would the punishment be for that? Well, they, um, they were, uh, it, it's really subjective, but um, usually a good behaviour bond and uh, where you don't get caught possessing it again is, is, is enough, but second offences become more serious, of course. Hmm. I can't work out whether he's telling the truth. Like, he sounds like he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> and you look like a lawyer in your suit. So well, this, this could it. be, you yeah. could be uh, really bluffing us with a suit. Yeah, you? that's what I think. Yeah. It's like coming smartly dressed, but you never know. OK, another law question then. What is the hardest case you've ever worked on and why was it particularly hard? The hardest case I've ever worked on was, um, uh, as I said, I'm in criminal law. And it was, um, it was a, a drug-related offence but um, it was a, an incredible cobweb of, of connections and, and uh, quite high-profile pro, high business people involved and uh, pretty uh, very sort of high security um, uh, operation and uh, we ended up with a conviction from the defendant which was pretty exciting but it took a long time. So do you work in a court? A lot of the time. Do I? Work in a court. Do you actually go into a court and have to like, sit there with a the judge and jury? And yeah, when that? I'm representing it, yes, of course. What are those wigs called that they wear? Do they have like, a certain name? <laughs> wigs. Yeah, you know the wigs, the like, yeah, judges. Yeah. They have wigs, don't they? Yeah. They do they have, have wigs. No, it's like, do they have a certain name? or? Uh, no, we just call them wigs. Mm. Wigging it out. <laughs> Could be bluffing. <laughs> Could be bluffing. <laughs> well, there you go. We're going to uh, ask you questions later on, on yeah. wine okay. and astrology. I'm looking forward to the wine one. Mm, so that sounds good so to me. I. I think we all are. <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. All right, thank you very much, David. Thank you, David, for now. With you More very, later. Very soon. I haven't got a clue. But right now, <laughs> we're going to throw to a break. We're going to go to a break and we'll be back soon. For me, remembering everything the morning after the night before, that's where it's at. Welcome back. You are watching Where It's At May Day on Channel 461, and we're talking blagging this afternoon. We are blagging it, blagging it, blagging it. <laughs> and uh, joining us now are two people out of a group of six that managed to do the ultimate blag. The from ultimate the, it blag. is the ultimate blag. <laughs> from the Channel 4 show Around the World in 80 Raves, please give it up for Bex and John! <laughs> Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. Anybody really that hasn't seen the programme and just worked out what they did, Blag, take a look at this clip. Oh, 
Catherine Stuff and quite possibly the only non-rude, drug-taking, sexual orientated <laughs> clip we could find. Oh, it's sorry. not that bad. <laughs> no, we did try to get guys, we did try to get a bit of naughtiness on, but it's still too early in the day. Um, now, that was incredible. Incredible. How, how did you manage to blag this? Oh, right. it was really easy, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was surprisingly easy, OK? All we did is we wrote um, a cleverly worded letter to a couple of production companies, and um, then they kept, wrote, wrote back to us. Um, one the next day, and then Rapido, who we made the show with, was a week later. They invited us down, we did some promos. Channel 4 liked it, gave us some money. <laughs> it was we done. Are. But anybody that hasn't seen it, I mean, it's basically a story of you go right the way across America, Las Vegas, San Francisco, lots of glamorous places. Uh, it's a 20,000 mile trip that you yeah. did. Yeah, pretty much yeah. 20, You've got this bus, miles, yeah. you get to go to top raves, you get to have a great time, you are on the sauce every night, you get lagered <laughs> up, you have a great time, do all sorts. And we didn't pay for any of it. And it was all paid for. Exactly. It was all paid for, yeah. yeah. That was the idea. <laughs> we well, didn't I mean, tell them that to begin with. We didn't say, <laughs> we want to get drunk for free, but um, that's how it turned out. I mean, the six of you on the show. How did that... you get the others involved? Yeah. yeah. Well, Glenn is my best mate, and we've been mess, best mates since primary school. It gets better. You get to go away. Like, <laughs> yeah, and, and, <laughs> and, and then Bopper is um, another one of my mates I've been in a band with. Um, Cheryl and Chantel are Bex's friends. So we just took our friends along so and we, yeah, said, we just, can we do we it? We just picked our friends. We just, well, we wrote it with Glenn, and then we uh, thought of our friends who would be good, and we just kind of cast our friends in it. You know, add in a stripper, and you've got a fantastic show. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it does have everything. I mean, what, what was it like when you were sat at home, and you got the call from, like, Rapido saying, OK, go uh, on, then do it. OK, it. have you ever seen uh, Wayne's World? Yes. Where the, you know, the, they get the TV show, and they dance <laughs> yeah. around and go, we've got $5,000. That's what we did. <laughs> well, I, rang up, I rang up Glenn's phone, and left the answer, uh, message on Dan's phone, and go, we've got $5,000. <laughs> and he called back and went, really, really, we've got $5,000? <laughs> No, no, we've got a no, TV show no, there. We've got a TV show, so... <laughs> wow. So, all this partying, all this booze and all this having yeah. fun, was there any hard work to be done? Um, mm. no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. I mean, we couldn't have a wash, that was one bad thing. Yeah. Was the bus. Bad I mean, we it's a glamorous wash. bus, but it has no washing facilities or, or anything toilet. like that. Toilet. No <laughs> toilet. You know, <laughs> so oh, we, we didn't do a lot of eating, really, either. No. We just ate burgers in truck stops the whole yeah. time. So, I mean, so, so we all came back about two stone heavier. Did you? Mm, <laughs> I mean, yeah. obviously, I mean, people of our age watching the show are going to be like, how cool are these guys? But I mean, with your folks and stuff, like your family, if they watch the show and like when they see you getting up to all sorts, have you been it's like, right. dragged up the coals at all? My, my, mom's, like my mum's got like, a mental girl. age of 15 year old guy <laughs> who, who still thinks it's cool that she's got her own house where she can drink and smoke in it <laughs> and have a party when she wants. So. I'm lucky because my parents live in South Africa, so they have no idea that I've even been on television. So. I think Glenn, Glenn's <laughs> mum was quite embarrassed, I think. <laughs> was it hard to pick who you were going to take with you? Like, was there a few friends that were. Your friends must yeah. have been, yeah. you must have friends like well, coming well, out of the woodwork. Well, we, we kept yeah. it quite quiet because we didn't want to go around telling everybody in, Just case, in case it, we didn't it, get it didn't it, work and then we looked like, stupid. Yeah. Um, but I think Bopper's kind of an obvious choice, really, anyway, because he's just so funny anyway, and he's just a live wire. And we knew that Cheryl was going to be good on the show as well. Well, she is a stripper. Of, you know, she's a stripper and quite... Mm. Cheryl's the sort of one in the group <laughs> that seems to be quite antagonistic and quite sort of like, mm. doesn't get on with everybody. A little bit. Yeah. Is, is that true? Yeah, it'd be fair to say. <laughs> 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 it's around that yeah. bush, it's true. Right. She, she, just, she just doesn't get on well with others, really. You know, Because uh, she's not done any promotion no, for it No, she won't all, have anything she? to do no, with No, she, she doesn't like it. I mean, that's how real the show is. It's not, you know, sort of six it's people really cast staged, to do it. So. No, I mean, she generally still hates us after the show. No. She won't have anything to do with us. She wouldn't come on the big breakfast, anything. She won't do anything with us. Because she she's not like it. Because she's <laughs> Nice girl. That's mad. Honestly, I mean, there's talk of a second series, isn't there? Yeah. It's like, now you've, like broken your duck and got a free trip, you must yeah. be like thinking, every year, where should we go next year? <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's like, this TV thing's easy. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your next plan of action? Um, well, we've had a call from Rapido and they're thinking of using us for the next series, we so want, we're just kind of seeing Yeah, we've been trying to work out are. where to go, uh, try and think of a sixth person Australia. to take with us. Oh, I wonder why. Yes, yeah, so he, like he wants, he wants South America. And the Caribbean. But, um, I want to go to Colombia. You know, we're not that fussed. As long as it's all free again, we'll be quite happy to go anywhere. <laughs> I mean, did any of you have, like, jobs that you had to give up to, like, go and do we, this? Yeah, we all got fired well, because well, of it. <laughs> we, we were, none of us really kind of had careers anyway. We're all dossers. So, <laughs> so we were just in agency work that we could just, you know, sort of pack in on the, on the spot. Have you not made lots of money out of it? No, we've not no, made any money out We haven't out made any money out of it But it, 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 wasn't, it wasn't ever about that for no. us. So, no. I mean, we're just happy that we actually got to we got. If you look at what we did, I mean, that in itself, it was, worth, it was worth nearly a million pounds the trip, so we best got that for moment. free. Best moment, one best moment. Jerry Springer? Me getting thrown off the Jerry Springer show is probably the, the most <laughs> proudest moment oh, of my I'd life. How did you manage to blag your way onto the Jerry Springer show? Well, oh, I mean, the researchers did a really good job anyway. I mean, they, they hooked us up with Jerry because they asked us what we wanted to do, and I said, 
I want to meet Jerry Springer. He's, he's my god. He's like my messiah. Because my old punk band, we had a song written about him that was right. quite offensive um, about the other uh, chat show hosts. <laughs> and so we're standing there uh, talking to Jerry Springer before the show, and the director's nudging me. He's like, tell him about your song. Tell him about your song. I'm like, we wrote a song about you, Jerry. And Jerry goes, well, maybe you can play it on the show. <laughs> like, no, no. <laughs> you probably don't want to see this song. And, and then, you did, and you got kicked off. Well, yeah, I mean, I can't probably repeat the words of no, the show. I don't no, I think the show is Listen, it is a great show. I mean, if you haven't seen it, check it out. It's Channel 4 Friday night. It yeah? is, yeah, 11 o'clock. Thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Let's hear it for Jerry Bex. Thank, Thank, Thank you, guys. Right now, I think it's time for some live music oh, with our fabulous friend, Mr. Kevin Leo, everybody. Yeah. You tell me you're in love with me. Cause you can take your pretty eyes away from me It's not that I don't want to stay But every time you come too close I move away I want to believe in everything that you say Cause it sounds so good But if you really want me Move slow There's things about me you just have to know Sometimes I run Sometimes I hide Sometimes I'm scared of you But all I really want is to hold you tight Treat you right Be with you day and night All I really want is time I don't want to be so shy Every time when I'm alone I wonder why Hope that you will wait for me You'll see that you're the only one for me I want to believe in everything that you say Cause it sounds so good But if you really want me Move slow There's things about me you just have to know Sometimes I run Sometimes I hide Sometimes I'm scared of you But all I really want is to hold you tight Treat you right Kevin's not going to be here next week. You're in Scotland, aren't you? He's in Scotland next He's week, but he will off. be back the following week. We've still got more live music to come up later on with Urban Chaos. But right now, it's time for Magbag. Oh, yes, it's that time of the week when we delve into the magazine world and take a look at the features that we think you should have been reading this week. And we've got some cracking ones this week, Lisa. We, we certainly, certainly have. I'm going to kick off with the Sunday Express magazine. And uh, as you can see on the front, uh, Posh Spice's sister, Louise Adams. She's the image of her. Yeah, well, she is the image of her, but she it's is. like she just copies her left, right, and centre, doesn't well, she? Well, this is it. She'll oh, just rip her face off. Sorry. Apart. Oh, well. <laughs> Um, yes, there's a whole article in here, in the closet with Louise Adams, and basically she's saying, you know, she's had enough of everybody saying she's trying to use her sister. She's living in there Victoria's shadow, isn't well, she? Well, what can you expect? Victoria Adams is the... Goddess. Uh, you know, the most famous woman, possibly, Oh, yeah, everyone definitely knows. one of the most famous women and, in this country. And now she's got her own... Uh, she's just opened her own shop, the explains she opened her own shop. It's called The Closet, isn't it? The, yeah, it's called The Closet, closet yeah. uh, where they live in Boreham Wood, I think, or somewhere. Goff Soak. Off soak, something Got like that. Soap. And she's also got um, her own article in a magazine. Uh, she's presenting something on Sky TV. So she's done very well. But this article, she doesn't stop talking about Victoria. Yeah. So she can't get away. She can't get away from the fact that it's her sister because she's forever getting my sister this, my sister that, my sister this. No. So it's like if you want to step out from the shadow, Louise, do it. Don't mention your sister. Don't every mention two your sentences. sister. That's all she talks about. Not kidding. But very nice pictures, nice clothes. Now, oh, nice pictures, nice clothes, and a nice lady for you here, Angelina Jolie on the cover of Marie Claire. They're looking very gorgeous in Tomb like Raider, of course. Voice. Yeah. She's looking very good. But inside here is a feature that I don't know. Guys, what do you think about women fighting? Love it! Oh, yeah, oh so I thought you might. Yeah. Well, these ladies here, this is hardcore. This is, oh, this is the hardcore world of female wrestling. Can we see that there? 
You got that? Now look at these ladies. Now these two, oh, these two, are actually the best of friends, believe it or not. And it's like when they start the feature, they're at home picking out colour schemes for their flat. But in the evening, they take part in TLC Hardcore Wrestling. Now, if you don't know what that is, TLC stands for the fact that they're allowed to throw tables, ladders and chairs at each other. They are allowed to, like, basically beat the crap out of each other. And these two girls are best friends. They are best friends, but it's like they were saying, like, female wrestling until recently was a bit gimmicky. It was like women dressed up in, like, you know, Wonder Woman outfits and coming in and being all like, oh, aren't we marvellous? But now it's gone uber violent. And it's like, these, these ladies, look, one of them lost her sight for six weeks. She was kicked in the eye. Why? Um, during this fight, uh, she also had her eardrum burst. It was bleeding so much that she couldn't hear for like three days afterwards. And uh, it's, it's just mad. It's like her ear canal is now full of blood. And what makes Ooh. me laugh though, I know, how horrible is this? Can you actually look see this there? Camera three? There blood pulled out of her ear. It's like, look at that, how like. nasty. She actually burst an ear canal, but she, what made me laugh is as she came out of the ring, she also went, I chipped a nail too. <laughs> It's like, I'm sorry, you're a hardcore wrestler, but a very interesting feature in this month's Marie Claire. Don't like fighting. All right, we've got another magazine here. The Sunday Times are out today. Obviously. Oh, yeah, because it's Sunday. Obviously, Lise. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's an article in here. Do you think I'm gorgeous? No, Michael Flatley, I think you're ugly. Nobody um, is going to think Michael Flatley is gorgeous. Nobody. This whole thing is uh, the ugly people who think they're gorgeous. And this is some examples down here with um, Courtney Love, Dean Gaffney, Christina Aguilera. Um, All favourites here on May Day. It's, it's quite hard, actually, this magazine, because it just says these people that aren't the loveliest looking people, but think but they, they are, honestly and believe stroll it. about and think they are and parade themselves a as they are beautiful. Apparently, a little story about Michael Flatley. At one of his many mansions around the world, he actually had a mosaic put into the hallway, which was his face. Oh. It's like, I wouldn't mind walking on Michael Flatley's face, <laughs> but it would be the real one, not a mosaic. But oh, Sorry, no, sorry, Mike Flatley. No, he's, a, he's a hot shoe shuffler, but I don't like. OK, Sky Magazine. Now, the top news in the... or biggest news, I should say, in the magazine world this week is that Sky has folded. I can't believe that. This is the last ever issue of Sky. It was like the Bible in the 80s, yeah. but then it went a bit off the boil. But a lot of my friends work on Sky, so I'm a bit upset for them. But this is a great feature. How many people have these people slept with? It's one of those things, they all look quite like this lady on the end. Oh, which finger am I there? Oh, no, the other one. Can't work out my fingers. This one. Ah, that one. It's like she looks a little bit of a, a game old bird, doesn't she? Yeah. But it's like, so you think she's slept with a lot of people. This guy, this end, you'd think, oh, he looks like he's been around the block a bit. But no. If you turn over, you see this guy has actually only slept with one person, this guy mm -hmm. here, and she's slept with none. It's like they've got the names on the T-shirts. I was going to get a T-shirt made especially for this feature, but I couldn't get one that said lost count on it. So, so there was no Point, was there, really? That's why you are a naughty boy. And a tummy kitten on the front oh, there, weren't looking they? Looking gorgeous. Just what quickly, do you think of them? Gotta say, looking gorgeous too. Kylie in Vogue. Oh, love Kylie. I'm sorry. We love like Kylie. How sassy is she? She looks fab. Loads of magazines. We haven't got time to do them all, but there will be so more many Mag Bag next week. That was Lisa and me doing Mag Bag. There you go. Oh, camera one. Um, there's still <laughs> lots of great things coming up this afternoon. Don't forget, we are fully interactive here on May Day. If you want to get in touch with us, you can. Come and visit us in the Trocadero, or you can phone us 0870 60 65 67. If you want to send us a little fax, you can on 0870 60 65 68. Or if you want to send us an email, get typing and send it to studio at whereits.at. There's coming up, after the coming break, up. we have a very special guest, Juliette Coombe, who also works with us, and she's going to tell us about the biggest blag She's a blagger, this She's woman. a huge blagger. Stay tuned, we'll be back me, after the break. The key word, I think, is freedom. It's about being able to go where you want to go, do what you want to do, and be who you want to be. And that's where it's at. You are, of course, watching Where It's At, and it's May Day. We're live right through till 9 o'clock tonight. We've got a bit of a theme going on today, blagging, bluffing. We've had an email from Dominique Lavelle from Tunbridge Wells in Kent. She says, I once blagged a night of free drinks for me and about 40 mates at quite a plush bar. I asked the barman to put it on my tab. What he didn't know is that I didn't have one. We left without paying for about £300 worth of free drinks. Top girl. <laughs> Top girl. I'd love that. If you've got any blags, then give us a call. Us, or you can email us, but right now it's time to go over to Nigel with Juliet Coombe. Hello, yes indeed I am, which come on to apparently. There you go. Um, yes, we're talking blagging all day, that was a top blag, I'm very impressed with that, but the lady with me now is somebody that's a friend of the station as well, the lovely Juliet Coombe. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now, we know Juliet because she works as a producer on the lovely travel show with Elliot, which is coming up at half past six, but also this lady has managed to blag her way into more parties than I could ever care to mention. Juliet, you are the ultimate blagger. Well, What's the secret of blagging? Well, I tried wearing low-cut tops. I tried, you know, I tried all the girl power things. They didn't work. And Cannes, which is obviously the ultimate place to crash, is quite a challenge This is for the film festival, yeah? This is the yeah. film festival that happens every year in May, and it's everybody's dream to meet the movie stars. And, of course, I was in love with Leonardo DiCaprio, and I wanted to see him. But, of course, I, little old me, I wasn't a very important sighting get any invites to the ball and I didn't have you know most people have a fairy godmother I didn't have a fairy godmother I had a bin liner you had your intuition yeah I had, I well I had a bin liner <laughs> bin liners are essential to anyone in the blagging business for many different reasons see, so, top tip yeah but bin liners this may not look like a bin liner because you're going to see it's a bit like blue peter this um, <laughs> this bin liner that I prepared earlier is vital because what you often have to do is a lot of the parties are along the croisette which overlooks the water and you have to do a sort of James Bond thing you have to get into your bikini get your scuba gear and of course, you can't turn up dripping wet. You've got to have a little outfit to wear. So it depended on how important the party was. So if it was a posh party, like an MTV party, what you'd do is you'd, you'd, you'd put this on your side of your bikini and you'd swim in. Now, what's useful about this is you can then go... And you've got so a nice dry dress, nice dry dress there. So you've got your dress, so you look really, you, you fit the part, you know. And this is obviously a dress then, that wouldn't crease. No, exactly, so mustn't like crease. Go. It's got to be ready to go. And then, of course, you can put your, all your scuba stuff and hide it behind the tree in your bin liner. Or if you're, you know, it's one of those funky parties, you know, like the Empire Party, which is also very difficult to get crash. This can be your outfit. So you can be like this sort you of... You a plastic Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Way. You see, you see, this is your outfit. So you sort of put this on like this and... It's really great because then you can be a bit groovy. You have your funky little bikini. Can we still hear you with your mic under there now? <laughs> so excuse me, so. I ripped your chest over. Oh my goodness, that's a bit too revealing. That so you can do all sorts of things. You, you can have a longer version. Oh yes, of course. I've, got, I've worn bin liners a lot. They were big, really big about 10 years. Bin liners were a big fashion statement for girls. Top fashion tips here, where it's at. Yeah, but black back bin liners are particularly good. So obviously the white one's a bit more summery and was perfect for cam. The black bin liners are good for sort of night, evening days. Okay, so that got you into your party and camp. What else have we got yeah, in this well, bag? There was like the whole Well, it's range also important in you here. cannot turn up in bare feet to party. So you've got to have these sort of shoes that you can put on and swim in, but obviously can drip dry by sort of shaking them a bit. So you've got to have your drip. And these are particularly good because you can get accessories all over now, really pretty little things, or make your own. You can get these sort of hair things and tie them, and suddenly you've got a very groovy shoe. Now, if you're slightly cleverer than I am, obviously, you can do all sorts of other kinds of blags which don't require the sort of James Bond routine. You can do the I'm whole... You've got to be a bit of an action girl to do all of oh, this, Oh, definitely. You? Oh, yeah, yeah. You've got to be sporty because you have to swim out miles. We're, yeah. not, we're, not, we're almost talking about, you know, doing the sort of... You know, 20 See, that's miles. See, I have to ruin the bag from my rubber ring and stuff as well. Because be they have all this security that try and stop you. So, I mean, you've got real odds against you actually getting there. But another blag that's really good is the mobile phone blag. You see, what happens is you do this. You get a friend to ring you from down the beach, all right? So yes. they ring you. You're going to the door. The guy's asking you for the invite. So he's listening to the, mo the mobile phone's going off. And he's going, oh, the mobile phone's going off. And you go, oh, God, I can't believe it. You're the perfect person for my latest part. And he goes, look, speak to this person. So the person's speaking on your mobile phone goes, yes, we're looking for somebody who's a bouncer <laughs> for our next movie in Hollywood. So the guy's talking to this person on the phone. He's obviously your friend down the beach. And, and you take the phone back. He goes, oh, darling, those cheekbones, we're going to work together. It's lovely. And you've walked in the party because completely like, going, oh, my God, I'm going to be in a movie. This is so exciting. So, what can I say? I mean, top tips, how good is that? Juliet, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. You're going to stick around because you're here all day anyway. Give it up for Juliet and her blags, please. <laughs> there is more coming up on Mayday this afternoon, but right now it's over to the lovely Ollie, the lovely Lisa. It's time for some bumps on seats. You're watching Bums on Seats. I'm Lisa, and this is the lovely Ollie Rawlings. Yeah. Round of applause. Oh, come on, more. <laughs> a bigger one than that, please. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. That's more thank like you it. Thank you very much. How are you? Ollie? I'm doing good. How are you? Have you had a nice weekend? I have. I have. Feeling a bit fragile. Exciting? I had a late night last night, so. Nothing too loud, nothing I too loud. Late nights, you didn't, did you? Naughty, we'll exchange naughty girl. notes later. Okay. <laughs> we're gonna review some top films today. Yeah. The first one we're going to take a look at is Meet the Parents with my favourite actor, Mr. Yeah. Robert De Niro. Um, it's out on DVD and video this week. 
It is. What do you reckon? This is a great comedy. Is, Everybody knows the plot. There's poor Ben Stiller who falls madly in love with this beautiful, beautiful girl. The one snag being he's got to meet the parents. Sounds like my life. My dad has to put every boyfriend through hell. <laughs> but is your dad an ex-CIA officer? That's, no. the, that's the big <laughs> if. I would stick my neck out and say this is as good a comedy as Groundhog Day. Yeah. 92, 93, this is a great, great film. We saw a film last week called Flawless, yep. with Robert De Niro trying to do comedy. He's good in that. He is fantastic in this. He is brilliant in this. And because everyone, we're used to seeing, like, say, De Niro in films like Good, Goodfellas yep. and yep. all these this gangster is... movies. And to do a comedy, he pulled it off so well, and he is funny. It's his most successful film ever. And the great thing about this is it hits all the right notes, and it makes all the gags, and then they make more and more and more gags and things that are unexpected happen and what's so good also is that watching it again and again and again it gets more and more entertaining it's a bit like again, airplane in that yeah. respect and you're you know laughing in advance of the jokes and mr jinx as we saw in that clip there this is a great film it is strongly a recommended film. i agree with you ollie thank good. you very much meet the parents it's out this week uh, available to rent buy on dvd and video yeah all right next film we're going to take a look at is skulls yeah, this is a psychological thriller with the guy from Dawson's Creek, Joshua Jackson, I think he's called. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it takes itself very, very seriously indeed. He's at a very, very swanky American school where there's some closet group called the Skulls where all the wealthy, influential students are eligible to join this club. And he is welcomed into this club only to find out that it's a bit more sinister than originally he expected. I just look at him and see Pacey. Pacey. And this is unwittingly the first great total disaster movie of the millennium. It is just so bad. Straight in there. It is just so bad. You watch it and you think, how could they not be laughing? Because I was sat there, I was crapping myself. This film is so funny. You were supposed so to be crap. scared. No, it's not scary at all. It's funny. It's scarily bad. And what's even worse about it is that what it tries to say is something very, very serious about the higher echelon of American <laughs> society and corruptible stuff going on everywhere. And you're like, give it a mess. Go back to Dawson's Creek. This oh, is bad. Go back to Dawson's Creek, because I like Dawson's Creek. I'm sorry, but a bit of a thumbs down there. Sorry. Skulls. I'm sorry. If you want to go and watch it. If you want to, I don't quite know why you'd want to. But, it's yeah. available to buy and rent on DVD and video this week. OK, third film we're going to take a look at is Drive Me Crazy. Who's in this? Well, this is starring the guy, the girl rather, who is in Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Melissa Joan Hart. Got it in one, Bob. And it's a romantic comedy and stop me if you've heard this before, but she wants to go to the prom with the most hunky guy ever. Hunky guy says, sorry, love, not tonight. So she has to therefore find a suitable match and she turns to the sad, dweeby next door neighbour who she just happens to fall in love with. Let's take a Touches look. Touches your heart, doesn't it? <laughs> Drive me crazy with Melissa Joan Hart there from Bewitched. Drove me crazy, that's oh, for sure. Oh, did it? Because well, I was no. hoping that you were going to say it's quite nice, because I like it. That's, well, it that's is a typical nice. girly film. It is, and it is, and it's sweet, and it's perfectly well done. The problem is it's so formulaic, it sticks to all of the rules. The one rule that it chooses not to stick to is that this is the only prom movie I've ever seen where at the end of it some mad slasher doesn't go loony <laughs> and start stabbing people brutally. But part of me rather wishes that he had done, because that would have spiced the whole thing up a hell of a lot. Oh, well, Ollie, I'm quite looking forward. I was going no, to watch good. that, it's but good. I'm not going to yeah, no, I'm Actually, in all fairness, I'm doing it slightly too down. It's OK, it's OK. <laughs> it's just not great. Better than the skulls, I'll give you that much. But better than skulls, not as good as me. The, the evening in front of the local elections is better than the skulls, <laughs> so I wouldn't worry about that. There you go. If you'd like to buy that or rent it, it's available this week. All right, the last film we're going to take a look at is Closer You Get. This is a quirky little film set in Ireland by the producer of The Full Monty, so you think, oh, that's good pretty film. good. And it's a nice little theme insofar as... These, these Irish lovelorn men living in this sleepy island uh, town, as I said, um, want some love. And they can't Aww. find any. And it's sad this week, isn't it? Lots of people wanting love. And they decide to advertise in an American newspaper for some lovely ladies, only to realise that the lovely ladies were in Ireland all along. That's closer you get. What do you reckon, Ollie? OK, without being great. It's yeah, a re very it's good a re films. Go, me the Parents yeah. was great. Me the Parents was the best film. I bang on about Me the Parents. <laughs> this, the real problem with this is it takes more than a shark to make Jules scary, more than an alien to make E.T. really moving and weepy. And so here it takes more than a group of lovable Irish rogues to make a really good Irish movie and and it's a comedy it's a comedy there is there yeah there is some witty stuff it's quite clever in parts 
A little bit. It's very Irish, very lovely. Lots of lots of scenes as we saw then. Lots of Irish men sitting back, knocking back the Guinness. Um, it's good. It's a bit plodding. It's slightly predictable, if not very predictable. Stick to the full Monty, Mr. Producer, and you should stick to Meet the Parents. So Meet the Parents is the big one to go out and buy. Has have any of you not seen that yet? Yeah. Yeah. It's a good film. We mean both. Film. It's agree. a great film. So there you go. Meet the Parents. Skulls drive me crazy, and closer you get. All available to buy, rent, whatever you want to do. Videos and DVDs. What have we got next week? You tell me. We don't me. know yet. Do more more of me, I, I hope. Week, <laughs> good movies. Good movies. Thank like you very much, Ollie. You will be back next week. I will be. I'm a round of applause it. for Ollie, please. Yeah. <laughs> Let's chill out a bit now with some music. They're playing London's 12 Bar tomorrow night and right now they're live on stage behind me with a love song they wrote themselves called La 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 Love Me. This is La 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 Lazy Me! Yeah. Woo!
Music coming up later on in the show. Urban Chaos will be performing live, so stay tuned for that. But as you know, Nigel and myself were set a challenge earlier yes. on by Ken, our director, and it's, it's quite a good one today, it's isn't a it? I like challenge. This one. I'm enjoying this a lot today. David Hodgson, who is here to the left of us. Now you've changed earlier yeah, on. Looks completely he had a suit different. On, and we were questioning him on law, and now we're going to question David on astrology to find out if he's an expert in astrology. And now you've or completely thrown me because you've changed clothes. And he looks like a. I, see, I was convinced after a chat before that you were in he fact was a, a lawyer. lawyer but now you look completely different so I'm not sure if you were <laughs> bluffing or not so we need to test you on astrology now I get very confused between astrology astronomy fortune telling looking at the planets all of that what is astrology astrology is actually a science and uh, it's it's to do with the moon basically and the other nine planets that are always in a, a circular pattern surrounding the earth um, there's an effect that these planets and where they're positioned at your date of birth has on you as a person, your moods, and that's conveyed into sort of a calendar form by uh, dividing this up into the 12 months of the year, which are the rotations of the moon around the earth. So you'd be able to tell characteristics about myself and Lisa mm. through our star sign, yeah? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, well we were having a look at the books earlier, this one I've been having a look at, and I was seeing, because I'm a Scorpio, so it's like, what, what does the typical Scorpio, what are they like according to your astro astrology laws. Well, you, you're actually a water sign, and uh, 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 and that's interesting. You um, you're very focused. You're quite um, intele intellectual. You can be quite <laughs> assertive, and but you also have to be watched because um, you can be uh, you can be fairly calculating and scheming. Oh, so as if as a friend of mine, I'd be watching you uh, to see, or I'd be making sure I didn't cross you. Put it that way. Well, it actually you... says in here I'd make a good mass murderer. Oh, mass oh well, murderer. see, there we go. <laughs> okay, what about me? I'm a Sagittarius. All oh, right, okay. Um, well, there are four. You've got water, air. Um, oh, I thought I was fire. Earth. You are fire. That's oh, the last one I was about to say. Don't you could have got that wrong. Um, as a fire sign, you, are, yeah, you butt in. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, also, you're, you're very energetic, you're very passionate. And uh, you like to be at the head of the crowd, so TV presentation is probably perfect for you. It does say that you'd make a good chat show host. So. Uh -huh. Lisa, there you go. Like it's Lisa. Okay, what about palm reading? Is that part of astrology? Yes, of course. Could you yeah. read my palm now then? Sure. What, what are the lines? Something what are the main lines? lines? Oh, with which hand do you write with? Sorry, which hand do I write with? My right. Ah, that's my problem. Okay. Oh, it's a great lifeline. You're going to have a long which life. Which lifeline? That. That's this one around here. Okay. Uh, we're looking for quite a long life here without too many hiccups in it, so that's... Um, good. Can't see any signs of... I mean, you can have changes in your lifeline that are for good or bad, but yours is just pretty pretty consistent. And then coming up here, yeah. there's not much of a fate line, so you, you better to um, not rest things with fate and try to sort of plan ahead a bit, oh. because this lifeline's going to... You're going to have to deal with that for a long time. Um, what about marriage and babies? Loves, that's what I said in the Loves, girls want to know about <laughs> marriage and babies. babies. Love's looking pretty good because we're, we're coming along here. Um, looking at your fingers as well, there's, you're quite an active person, busy person. You, um, uh, you're you quite practical. That, you can get away with that easily. It's like they work as like dogs that wear it out. Of course we're going to be busy. <laughs> <laughs> and, but quite practical by the nature of the, the shape of the hand and the fingers. So. Okay, mm. so you Thank obviously you. get a lot of stuff by like looking at the planets and things and yeah. all that sort of stuff as well, yeah? Name the nine planets. Earth, and then what are the other eight? Ooh. Come on. Saturn, Saturn, Mercury, Venus, Uranus, Pluto, Neptune. How do we, how do we get, how many to go with that? I wasn't counting. That's seven. Seven. Uh, Mars, Saturn. See, you know, see, you didn't reel those off as quickly as I thought you would, so... Mm, we're not convinced. We're not convinced. We're not convinced. Not convinced. We shall see, we shall see. We'll have to discuss this. But what there's going to be more from David later, doubtless in another outfit as well, which will throw us completely. <laughs> but for now, David Hodgson, thank you very much. Thank you, very, very confused. But um, there's more coming up. May Day, this is where it's at, Channel 461. For me, being able to voice my opinions without being made to feel small by people who don't share them is where it's at. Oh yes, it's time for Booked and joining me as ever is our book fame, Rachel Williams! Yeah. Whee! Yeah. We have a special book this week. We haven't got a guest, but we've been doing something very exciting. You've been out and about this week for us, Rachel, haven't you? Yeah, I went to the Orange Fiction Prize Awards in um, Pimlico Gardens 
Um, it's kind of a big glittery award now. It's got the biggest um, prize award in the whole of um, Britain. It's £30,000 for the winner. So no it's bad quite thing. exciting. And what's it for? Is it for, it's for female yeah, writers? Yeah, it's only for female, female writers. It's quite controversial, actually. And the, judge, the panel of judges is all women as well, so it's quite exclusive. But there were a few blokes hanging about. Yeah, I bet you've <laughs> had a few blokes en route. Well, let's have a look what Rachel got up to earlier this week at the Booker Prize. Totally surprised, slightly shell-shocked, but absolutely delighted. What's so special about the Orange Prize for you? It's the first time an Australian has won it. I think it might be the first time an Australian's even been shortlisted. It's got an amazingly strong shortlist. That's a very great honour to be on a list with all those other very strong books. Love stories have a bad press, but you know, it takes two to tango. A man has to fall in love as well as a woman. And my book shows both of them happening. It's actually a two-hander, it's not a one-hander. Most, I suppose, romances are very much, you know, uh, like the Jane Austen model, you don't really ever get to know the men. In my book, you do get to know the man at least as well as you get to know the woman. And you see them both mutually falling in love. So what's your plans? How are you going to celebrate? Uh, in the short term, I'm going to go and hear Suzanne Vega. Uh, in the long term, I'm going to rearrange my next few years to incorporate much more writing and much less money-making teaching and so on. What were you looking for in your winner? You look for... Oh, a book that moves you, that charms you, that teaches you, that totally takes you somewhere. Characters that you remember. You look for wit and humour and a kind of wiseness about the world. Um, all of those things are in the idea of perfection. And kind of something more. You know, there's a magic about a great book that in a funny way you, you can't quite define why it snuggles inside you and makes your heart beat a little faster. And I, that absolutely does. What do you think about the Orange Prize? I think it's fantastic that there's a prize for women in fiction. I think that, you know, in the old days when George Eliot wrote, her real name was Mary Ann Evans and she had to use a man's name to get taken seriously. So the fact that there's an auspicious, prestigious prize like this just for women shows how far we've come and I think it's great. I think that a lot of female writers do get ignored. I think there's a lot of amazing female authors out there who do kind of slip by the wayside and don't get noticed. So to have an event really for them, what's it, 96 with this award, is a great ceremony to have um, and it means they do get the acknowledgement that they deserve. I think we do need it. I think, you know, it's important to keep in context with the other things that are going on in the world uh, of literature. But I think a prize like this is so valuable and so wonderful and, you know, as we saw tonight with the winner, I mean, this prize is will completely transform her life. Her novel wasn't really known before she was nominated for the prize. I think it's good because it's a good media angle. I think that really good writing is genderless, just like a lot of women feel that, and a lot of men feel that too. I must say that I'm a bit biased, and I would tend to want to read women's fiction more than men's fiction, but of course, you know, at the end of the day, a good book is a good book, and that's the most important thing. Let's go. There you go, Rachel, earlier this week at the Orange Prize for Fiction Awards. Were you happy with the winner? Do you think Kate should have won? Yeah, she was the outsider, but um, the book's really well written. It's, not, it's kind of a usual subject matter, because it's about two sort of older people coming together and later on in life, and they're quite awkward, anti-heroic characters. So that was good in that respect. But um, personally, I kind of like Margaret Atwood's book, Blind Assassin. These are the other ones that were yeah, shortlisted, weren't yeah. they? I mean, this is kind of your typical um, female subject matter in a way. It's a love story. But, I mean, it's beautifully written, so it's good for that. From that point of view. So when I was reading this yesterday, I can imagine this being turned into a film. Mm. You can see it like yeah, Julia Roberts completely. or Richard Gere or yeah. somebody. It's like it's all it's quite set in emotive, the, isn't in the Australian it? outback as well. So it's be beautiful, beautifully seen, and set up, and everything as well. But um, the the woman that won, Kate Grenville, was the first Australian to won the prize. So no, yeah, I think it's a good result. Yeah. And what was Vanessa like? I've got to ask Vanessa Feltz. She was um, losing the battle with the canapes. I have to say. <laughs> You're going to put that weight back on, Vanessa, <laughs> if you're not careful. Uh, Rachel, thank you very much, as yeah. ever, for coming in. A bit of a quick one this week, but she had fun outside, didn't she? That was booked. Time now for some more music and some lovely ladies that we had earlier on in the show today here on Mayday on a Saturday afternoon. Don't forget, if you want to check out the website, by the way, it's www.whereits.art. I've got to plug that. Coming up now with singing Mr. Weatherman. They're going to rain over everybody else in the charts, I think. They're great. Slowing it down, it's urban chaos! <laughs> Dead of the night and I'm lonely 
You're out with your friends with a glass in your hand. You don't call me. The skies open up, the tears fall down. I'm falling into a hole in the ground. I'm lost in a flood. I'm waiting for you. You can take away the fly if you wanted to. Is it black or white? Is it day or night? I'm calling. You're creeping in as I'm going out in the morning. The skies open up, the tears fall down. I'm falling into a hole in the ground. I'm lost in a flood. I'm waiting for Thank you yes. very much indeed. They will be big. Don't, you are going to be huge. I guarantee it. Thanks, it's got girls. to be done. All right, still to come on today's show, we've got some gossip after the break. Oh, yeah, gossip, gossip, gossip. Also, we've got Get Packing with Elliot Daniel, our globetrotting guru. He's going to be here at 6.30 this evening. And then at 7 o'clock, 7.30, M Nigel and myself will be back for Chart Attack. We'll but right now, we're going to a break. We'll see you soon. I've got my grandmother down from the Camel Wheel pub and she's reckoning to do the town. Wouldn't want to worry what the weather woman told you. Wouldn't want to worry what the weather man said. Wouldn't want to worry what the weather woman thinking about. Talking about, talking about, thinking about. It's gonna be a fine day. It's gonna be a real fine day. Hi, we're Cleopatra and we are. Where is that, darling? Oh, where is that? Yes, it's just the R. I'll wear it Two. We're bluffing and blagging all afternoon. This is where it's at. Channel 461 live from the Trocadero. Don't forget, we're fully interactive. If you want to get in touch with us, you can. You can phone us on 0870606567, fax us on 0870606568, or you can send us an email as well, if you like, and that address is studio where it's dot at. Don't forget to log on to the website too, www.whereits.at. Have you got enough information? We've got some great gossip coming up, because right now, it's the time when I find out all about the showbiz world with our lovely showbiz guru. It's time for a bit of gossip, gossip, gossip. Oh, 
Oh yes, it's time for gossip and this week it's a bit of a double whammy. Not only do you get me and Lisa together for gossip, that's lovely. It's nice, isn't it? But we've also got a new showbiz guru with us this week from Esquire magazine. Give it up for Tanya Dye! Welcome to May Day on a Sunday afternoon. Thank, Thank you for you joining for coming us. In. Thank you. Now, Lisa, you've not done gossip. Before, I haven't done gossip. Like, this nervous. is where you find out about all the parties. Now, Tanya, you've had a bit of a party-filled week, haven't you? Well, um, I covered most of the election night parties on Thursday, and it's quite suitable, really, because a very, very boring election, very boring results, and very boring parties, I'm afraid. I mean, as we know, Labour had a massive bash in 1997 at the Royal Festival Hall. There was none of that triumphalism this year at all. They had a very, very quiet party at Millbank, to which they didn't even allow the press. I think the best party of the night was probably the Lib Dems down at Pizza on the Park. They had, they had a really great night, Have very successful. Pizza on the Park, I love it. I mean, do you get celebrities coming to the election bashes? I mean, are they all there? Um, well, this year at the Conservative Party party, if you can call it that, we did spot... The Conservative <laughs> wake, I would have thought. <laughs> it was a wake. Uh, we spotted William Roach, who plays Ken Barlow in Coronation oh, Street. Oh, I like it. Oh, top celebrities Top there. celebrity <laughs> for the Tories this year. Um, but what was really interesting was that their number one uh, celebrity Tory this year, who's Jim Davidson, the comic, he turned up at five o'clock in the morning, shall we say, a little the worse for wear. So Jim Davidson likes his sauce, doesn't he? No I think that's been, there, I think that's been well documented. It's like Jim Davidson does like a tipple, doesn't he, bless him? But what about Jordan? Because Jordan was up standing oh. in the election, wasn't she? She was up front and up standing in the election. Yes, so. she was. Um, she was standing. The Daily Star arranged for her to stand for Stretford and Urmston, a, a seat in Manchester, as an independent. And she did poll 713 <laughs> votes, <laughs> which isn't bad considering she only canvassed in the constituency once. <coughs> but she doesn't seem too upset because she was photographed horse riding yesterday in Ricelip. Looking very happy indeed. In a bra. Did I you know. see this in the News of the World? With the GGs and the double Fs or whatever it said. Yeah. It just made me laugh. But I find it quite ironic that like, Jordan should be standing. It's like normally she's lying on her back, isn't she? <laughs> no, I don't. Ah, sorry, point. but it's true. It's true, it's true, it's true. OK, now, other news this week. We've all been glued to Big Brother. Oh, now, yes, Penny Ellis, we? the eviction. Oh, I have. I'm sorry, have we been glued to Big Brother? Okay, have we been glued to have Big Brother? Have we been glued yeah. to Big Brother? Yes! There you go. Mark, no, Flora, and me have been glued to Big Brother. I have been watching it. Penny. Penny she's been booted out. She's a complete loon, though, isn't oh. she? I mean, there is news on Penny, isn't there, apparently, from today's papers? Well, um, we think it's quite likely that she's going to be sacked from her job as a teacher. She's been a teacher really? for nine and a half years in a girls' school. And she did actually admit in the papers today that her headmistress said that she would be sacked if she got naked on the show. And, of course, she did. And she snogged three of her housemates. <gasps> uh, we know she snogged Brian and Paul and possibly even Elizabeth. Um, but Brian's gay. Gay guys always let women snog them. It's like, that's their... Thing in life, really. Imagine if that was your school teacher. No, I know, I know. Imagine. Can you imagine, like, tuning into the TV and seeing, like, your history mistress with a bat salad? Oh. It's just like, no. Well, she's claiming that wasn't her fault, and she says it's the cameraman behind the mirrors in the girls' bedroom. Whenever they start to undress, there's one called Pervy who always zooms in on her, so she's saying it wasn't her fault. It was Big Brother. It was... Big Brother Channel 4's fault that she was pictured naked. You know you're on TV, you know you're being exactly. watched by cameras and, oh, your yeah. towel drops to the floor. But, I'm oh, sorry, I don't believe it. Madonna, as well, this week, started a tour, of course. Yes, her first uh, world tour in eight years kicked off yesterday in Barcelona. And we think the Queen of Pop has kept her crown. The reviews are rave. She is great, isn't she? I love we Madonna. All I would love so Madonna. like to go and see her when would she you? plays I'd here. like to go. Let's go now. Should we try? Anybody out there got Madonna tickets Give you want to send us? Please do. Send them in straight away. What about other news this week? Friends have been in the news as well, haven't they? Um, yes, they've popped a million dollars each per episode for their ninth and final series. Apparently it was kind of a, a joke request. They didn't want to do the ninth series, so they said to their agents, we want a million dollars per episode and each. And they got it. Warner Brothers went for it. Wow. So it's not bad, uh, not bad work if you can get it, is it? Certainly not. Come on, okay. that's very nice. Quickly, what parties you got coming up this week? Anything major for us? Um, well, there's a, huge there's a huge It's Fashion Party sponsored by Vogue at Waddiston Manor, the Rothschild place on so Monday. So next week's is going to be very fashionable. Very, very big Love fashion party, Fantastic. Yes. More gossip next week. Give it up for Tanya. That was you join us again for the May Day Challenge. It's Bluffers Day here on May Day, and uh, all afternoon we've been put to the test, haven't we, Lisa and I, uh, by this man over here, David, Hodge, David Hodgson. We know that he's an expert in a certain field. It's either law, astrology, or, or wine, wine tasting. We've quizzed him already on astrology and law. What do you reckon so far? Well, I wasn't it? convinced with the astrology. I thought, when I asked you about the planets, David, you weren't reeling them off as quickly as I thought maybe you should. No. Uh -huh. yeah. See, at first, I was with law. I thought he was. Yeah, so I was convinced you were a lawyer when you wore the suit. Then I thought he was a shortage, so now I think he's a white chaser. Exactly. Like we haven't got a clue, basically. It's like, what, what are you reckoning here? What do you reckon he is? Well, I'm lawyer. 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 Okay, so basically, <laughs> nobody has a clue, basically. Okay, so wine tasting. How long have you been doing this for? Ten years. Ten years. Mm -hmm. So you know your wine. Yep. Okay, okay. so we've got two bottles of wine here. Lovely. Um, 
Would you care to pour us sure. a little taster? We'll start with the white because you usually taste technique. whites before reds. Why? Why do you taste white before red? Because um, white tends to be simpler in structure and it tends usually refrigerated. So, um, okay. uh, so it's better if you're drinking in reverse um, from red to white, you probably won't taste the wine as well. Okay, so let's, so let's see you taste this one. Tell us, tell us what you think. Right. Well, first we look at the appearance. Um, that's, that's for a Chablis, which is a Chardonnay white wine. That's quite good appearance. Then we swirl. We swirl. Yeah, which Why gives do we off, swirl? It gives off the, the um, aromas and all the smells you find on the wine. Also, it, stimulates, it stirs up the alcohol, so that takes a lot of the fruit. So when you're smelling this now, then, what, what do you smell? I mean, I, to me, it smells like vinegar, but I mean, what does it smell like to you? <laughs> Sorry, but it does. Yeah. It's, it smells, smells to me like, um, like the, the Chardonnay variety or grape variety that is in Chablis. And that tends to have um, honey and peach characters. There's also a, a minerally character that you get from the region of Chablis with chalky soil, etc. How do you cope if you get a cold, if you have to smell wines and stuff? Pretty badly. Is that, is that a nightmare? Would that be like your yeah, worst? You, you, you can't taste for the cold, really, because uh, the sense of smell is very important to the sense of taste, which we'll do now. OK, taste. OK, let's taste. Best so we bit. smell, so we anticipate, and now we Ooh. taste. So you just dive so straight in. I'm just like, down it. Mm. Oh, I forgot to gargle. <laughs> I did Lisa, again. you're not supposed to swallow so quickly. Swish around your mouth and it... it, it <laughs> And you are. <laughs> so, David, carry on. And you get the full characters of the wine, and then you can see it going through your, your smell senses as well. So, and then you have the finish, which is also very important. Uh, it gives you the whole experience, basically. OK, so okay. what about the red? That was the wine. Uh -huh. I'm actually quite convinced by him on this one. Mm, I am, I am. Right. OK, so the red, this one I'm more excited about, because I'm a bit of a red wine drinker. It's like white wine, I'm a white wine leaves girl. me cold, but red wine every time. Don't we know about uh, you yes, on Friday indeed. night? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Once again, we're looking at the colour. So um, that's got a nice um, bright ruby red colour, which is, uh, which is quite attractive. Um, we're going to swirl again to, to give off the, um, the aromas and the smell characters. And smell. Oh, see, that nice sort of dark, very summer pudding characters there. Can you smell a good wine and a bad wine, obviously? Of course, have. yeah. So, um, wouldn't you like hold this up to the light to look at it as well? Or of course, usually, well, you'd have a white paper backdrop, so you look oh, at really? it like that, and then you get uh, no interference with the colour at all. So if you look at it like that, you'll get orange through, and it'll look brown. Okay. Oh, uh -huh. see, it's convincing. Me, it must be said. <laughs> okay, so the taste of this one. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to tell you out for it. Look at the rest of the show to do. Okay, the taste. Um, being a red wine, it has more tannins, which is that sort of drying effect on the finish. But it also has some very nice sort of ripe um, red berry characters as well, like, um, sort of along the lines of um, uh, red currants, black currants, and, and plummy, plummy characters. Is this a good red or a bad red? It's, it's what I would call a good commercial red wine. Where, it's it's good from? everyday drinking. Do you, do you know the country where this is from? It's from Australia. Did you know that from looking at the bottle, or did you actually know that from your... A bit of both. There, there's a certain Australian character, too, that, um, that, that uh, you can taste in the wines. A lot of vibrant, upfront fruit. OK. okay. Well, see, I'm, I'm pretty convinced. I'm, mm, I'm with the wine now. Yeah, I'm not wine. We're just having a lovely time. We're just sitting there. <laughs> David, we will be back to you later when we've got to make up our minds and decide whether you are bluffing us okay. on all of those, or one of those, or whatever. But well, uh, We're right going to now. decide. <laughs> Yes, it is time to look at the latest releases in the pot world. Joining me as ever is the lovely Kevin, and let's go straight into it this week because we've got loads to get through. We're going to start off with a man that was fronting the band Wet 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 in the 1980s. He had massive hits with Sweet Little Mystery and Wishing I Was Lucky, all of that. Then he went ballady, did that song for Four Weddings and a Funeral, Love Is All Around. Uh, now he's gone solo. This is his first solo single. It's called Close To You. It's Marty Pello. Marty Pello. Um, what did you think of that, Kevin? I think he's excellent. I mean, I think he's got one of the best voices that's yeah. come out of Scotland. Um, Apart from Lulu, the only one. other person I can think of from Scotland. Mm, but right. now, I mean, it's great. I mean, he's had a few tr troubles, hasn't he? He got involved yeah. in like drinking drugs, and it's been very well documented. But he's back. This is his first solo single. Do you think people are still interested in Marty Pello? Definitely. When you come with sentiments like that, 
Thumbs up from me. No, he is excellent. It's a bit middle of the road. It's like, you know, more middle of the road than the lines down the A1. But we still like that tune. It's close to you. That's Marty Pello, and that's out this week. Well, from the sublime to the ridiculous, that was very laid back and ballady. We're now going to go pure, pure pop with a group that were actually in on May Day a few weeks ago. Um, this is their brand new single. It's their first single ever. You might have seen them from a Saturday morning show called Star Street. They are called the All Stars, and this is Best Friend. We are best there you go. It's one of those, isn't it? So Definitely. Yeah. From the same stable. That was a hit in the studio. From the same stable as Steph. And A1, that is Sam, Ashley, Tyler, Sandy, and Rebecca. They are the all stars. Kevin, pure pop, but it Excellent works. hook. Bubble gum, but a nice flavour. Yeah, pure bubble gum, pure candy floss, <laughs> completely throwaway. I mean, they're going to be massive. They've got the show on a Saturday morning, so people know all about them. So, you know, I can see my niece and nephew shaking a little tushy stuff. Definitely. Definitely. It's like 20 million other songs that you've ever heard before, but a good version. Yeah, but it works. And this, the frightening thing is, they've actually got a cover version coming out later this year of Duran Duran's Is There Something I Should Know? Now, that will be interesting. See, that was a class record, so we'll <laughs> see what they do that, but with that. But that is All Stars, their brand new single, Best Friend. OK, moving on to yet another genre of music. If you're looking for one of the trendiest DJs in the world, then you can't look further than the likes of Roger Sanchez. It's been 20 years since he spanned his first tune, 10 years since he released his first single, but he's never released an album. This is a track from his brand new album that's out next month. This is called Another Chance. He's worked with everybody from Michael Jackson to Sintetia, and that is DJ Roger Sanchez taken from his brand new album that is called First Contact out next month. What do you think? Deserves to be a hit in the clubs. Don't think it deserves that video. Now, the video's a bit odd. It's like, oh, there's mm. a lot of talking in it and that woman with a great big heart. Very strange. But that's out soon. That's Roger Sanchez. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's time to look at this week's cinematic releases. Joining me as ever, as ever is Evan Maloney. How you doing, Evan? Oh, doing well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We've got some good films this week. We're going to kick off with Say It Isn't So. What's this Say It Isn't So. It's uh, produced by the Farrelly brothers who did... Uh, Something about Mary. Something about Mary yeah. and Dumb and Dumber. But they've given the directorial reins to the second assistant director for those films. Uh, is it a bit of a stupid movie? Is it one of those... It's just like... your gross-out comedy. Yeah. Typical gross-out comedy about a guy who, who falls in love with this girl. They have a passionate love affair. And then they find out that they're brother and sister. So she goes off to marry someone else. He finds out that they're actually not brother and sister, so he chases her across the country to try and tell her before she gets married. And meanwhile, the whole country now knows that he's been having sex with his sister, apparently. So there's a few, that's all the, it's one, one gag sort of film. The normal <laughs> subject matter for a Ferrelli film with the Santa. Right. Let's take a look. This is a clip of Say It Isn't So. There you go, Say It Isn't So, Chris Klein and Heather Graham. Now, Heather Graham doesn't normally do a comedy role. She was Felicity Shagwell in Austin Powers. She Powell, was, yeah. She? What's she like in this? Um, she's OK. She, I'm, I am actually a big fan of, <laughs> of, of Heather. You're not? Yeah, I know I am. Oh, so I think yeah, she's I think great. she's gorgeous. Oh, oh she's actually. absolutely stunning. So, yeah. OK, rating-wise, is that a nowhere, a somewhere, a nearly there, a there, or a where it's at? Um, it's, 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 almost, it's nearly there, OK, so really. that's sort of like Midway House. It's yeah, three out of five. The Faraday Brothers had a directed it. They probably could have handled the comedy a little bit better, I think. But they shouldn't have given the reins over to somebody yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Say It Isn't So out this week. Let's go to a bit of a horror clip now. This is the brand new movie, a bit hammering style I think, this one. We'll have a look at a clip. This is Dracula 2001. Skulls. There you go, Dracula 2001. Evan, is this one really scary or is it scarily bad? Um, it, it, for every kind of like new thing with the uh, vampire movies, there's a cliche thrown in as well. But. Uh, it's quite funny the whole, in the beginning he's locked up, he's been chained up in this uh, coffin and these robbers go in there and they see this thing all chained up and they think, my God, there must be something really valuable in there. <laughs> so so they, take, they take the coffin all chained up and they open it up on a plane and of course uh, the vampire comes out. And so it's, it's the classic Dracula story, it's basically, it's like unleashing with the, the modern, vampire. And... and they end up down in New Orleans, which is where um, Anne Rice's film was vampire yeah, yeah, to wasn't the vampire. it was set down in New Orleans as well which I don't know if you want to avoid sure. vampires don't go to New Orleans <laughs> basically it's like don't go there so this one is it going to be a somewhere uh, a, a nowhere it's, somewhere a nearly there or there or where it's at it's somewhere it's somewhere okay so not bad Dracula 2001 out this week okay let's move on to another film it's autumn in New York now this is a bit of a love story isn't it's it? a bit of a love story yeah and uh Richard Gere plays you know your serial um what snogger you, snogger oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah who uh he makes this young girl who's 21, he's about 50 years old, and uh, they have, start having an affair, and he's thinking, like, it's going to be another milk carton with a use-by date pretty short. And uh, he finds out that she's got a terminal illness, so she's going to die anyway. So. Oh, it's a bit of a weepy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah OK, yeah. let's take a look at the clip. This is Autumn in New York. There you go. We know the rider obviously wants to do him. Still looking very doable at the age of 50 plus. Richard Gere in Autumn in New York. Worth seeing? Um, well, apparently the film had a lot of problems with the script. They kept rewriting and rewriting, and it kind of shows because Richard Gere's character in particular, he goes from this this uh, this cad to a romantic uh, man with a heart of gold, 
And it's quite inexplicable. You can't quite figure out why he suddenly changed. I mean, obviously, the girl's I mean, dying. Without but... giving the story away, I mean, is it quite a predictable film? Always when you get people with terminal illnesses, usually in films, of course, <laughs> well, they tell you at the end. But is it one of those films that you can see the ending coming a mile off? Well, yeah, I mean, she's going to die, isn't she? But don't tell us whether she does or not. OK, so is that oh, a nowhere no. or somewhere, and nearly there, some, or, there or where it's at? It's somewhere. It's a somewhere. 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 OK, so that's only like two out of five, so that's not particularly brilliant. It's not brilliant, particularly is it? brilliant, no, no. OK, let's move on to another one. A bit of a drama this time before night falls. Yeah. And a great drama too. I mean, the guy. It's based. It's a biopic based on uh, the the exiled poet and writer from Cuba called uh, Ronaldo Arenas. And I'm going to pretend have, I know who that is. I have no clue. The guy H H Javier Bardem right. is the actor. He plays him, and uh, he was nominated for an Oscar, and he should have won. His performance is just incredible. Okay. And the guy. So I would say you've sold it to me. Let's let's uh, look at a clip. This is Before Night Falls. What? There you go, Before Night Falls. Okay, rating wise, is that a nowhere, a somewhere, a nearly there, a there, or a where it's that's at? That's our first. That's our first where it's at. Whee! Uh, five yeah. out of five. Our first where it's at. How yes, fantastic! Yes. Okay, so many films this week. It's ridiculous. Uh, on to another life. What's this one about? Uh, it's a British drama based on a, a woman who whose lover. She has a love affair, and her lover kills her husband. And. Uh, I watched the film and I thought, well, this is a great story, but it doesn't seem quite believable. And then I walked out and found that it was based on a true story. Oh, she was, blimey. So, yeah. uh, quite often so there we go. true stories the are the, the weirdest ones. Picture. Let's take a look at a clip. This is Another Life. <laughs> yes, that wasn't in fact Another Life. That was Johnny Depp in a wig because he appears in Before Night Falls and the guys down there at MCR have got the wrong clip, but it doesn't matter really. But Another Life, good film. Another yeah. Life, yeah, it was good. It was a great film. Um, it helps if you know that it's based on a true story because then your suspension of disbelief is, is there, whereas but if I was it's thinking. true, you do yeah. believe the whole lot, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so rating wise, nowhere, somewhere, nearly there. there That's nearly there. That's nearly there. Okay, look, Evan, as ever, great lot of films for us. Yeah. You know you're back next week with Evolution, which is one of the big summer yeah, ones, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, so, There'll be more from Evan next week. My thanks so much to Evan, as ever. That yeah, was me. Hey, you're watching Mayday. Don't forget that coming up, oh, in about ten minutes, Elliot will be here with his travel show, Get Packing, and then Nigel and myself will be back at half past seven for Chart Attack. Uh, so tune in. It's going to be a good one. If you'd like to call us, you can on 0870 60 60 567. Let us know if you've blagged anything, because it's blagging day here on Where It's At. Being happy, good mates, having a laugh, that's where it's at. <laughs> 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 You're watching Mayday, still to come this afternoon, find out if Lisa and I can succeed with our Mayday bluffing challenge. But right now, time for some music. Singing a cause number, what can I do? Here's Kevin Leo and the boys! Yeah. Yeah. I haven't slept at all in days So long since we've talked And I have been here many times Times I just don't know what I'm doing wrong What can I do to make you love me? What can I do to make you care? What can I do to make you feel this? What can I do to take you there? There's only so much I can take And I just got to let you know And who knows I might feel better I don't wait, I don't hope What can I do to make you love me? What can I do to make you care? What can I do to make you feel this? What can I do to make you care? 
banned. He's not going to be back next week. He's going to be back the following week. Two weeks' time. So stay tuned for that. Right, well, all afternoon, we've been set the challenge here with our bluffing day on May Day. And David Hodgson, the man over here, is an expert in either wine, law or astrology. It's time now for the challenge finale. Lisa and Nigel, you have now interviewed David on wine, law and astrology. Which of these fields is he an expert in? And which is he bluffing? You have one minute to decide. Well, we've got a minute to decide. So, David, I, I've got to say, like, when I asked you about the planets earlier, you couldn't say them very, very quickly. Why was that? Uh, I'm a pretty deep thinker, and uh, uh, sometimes that clouds your memory a bit. Plus, I can't make it too easy it for you. It could have just been nerves. <laughs> so it could be a could bluff, bluff, double bluff. We just haven't got a clue. Also, with the wine tasting, you see, I wasn't convinced of that because there was one bit when you, you, we were saying about, like, you've got to hold it to the light, and, and you never mentioned that. I mean, I know that, and I'm not a wine taster. So why didn't you mention that? Do it. It's, it's probably because it's more habitual for me just to do it. Uh, I, don't, I don't often sort of instruct like that, so... See, now he doesn't take me as being a lawyer now. No, see, he did in the suit. Lawyers really out of the completely. window now. yeah. I just think when you see somebody, like, in a suit and tie, you think, yeah, it must be a city general, a bit of a lawyer, but... See, no. now you look all casual and, like, you could be a wine Like tester. a wine Appearances could be deceiving. Though. Also, yes, when talking of appearances, you're very tanned. And I don't think a lot of lawyers have deep tans, so they're usually quite pasty, aren't they? So, where'd you get your tan from? Oh, I had to do some research in Spain a few weeks ago, so I was out there for, um, for about 10 days. Mm. Mm. Wine tasting, wine they have taster. wine in Spain, don't they? <laughs> wine tasting, wine taster. Can, can we decide? Can, can we, we decide say? now? I th I think, okay, we I reckon, think do we think wine I tasting? I think it's wine tasting, do you? Hans, do you think it's wine tasting? <laughs> yeah, we think that David Hodgson is a wine taster. Are we right? Are we right? Are we right? Who's going to tell Who's us? Who's going to tell us? Can, can David tell us? Yeah. Oh my God. All right. Last minute. David, what are you? Wait a sec. What is it? Who else thinks he's a wine taster? No. No. <laughs> are, we, are we wrong? Do you Astrologer? reckon we're wrong? No. Yes. Law? See, yeah. No. No. Mm. Law. None of them no, agree I'm with sorry, us. No. Well, all right. Nobody agrees with us, but I think we should go for it. I think wine taster. Wine taster. Bravo. Okay. We think you're. Are we going to do it? Yeah. Yes. We, we think, think you're a wine taster. taster. You're right. Yeah! Right. <laughs> yes! 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 You're all wrong. You're all rubbish, <laughs> and we were right. You get one with your sister, don't you? I do. She's here. Where Where, she? Where's Where's Hi, the Nick. lovely Nick? Oh, yeah, yeah, she's hey. over there. You won't see him. Gotcha. She's... Don't forget, still to come this afternoon. You can find out who is the brand new number one. Who do you reckon, Shaggy or Pied Piper? Pied Piper. Shaggy? Shaggy! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, see, the majority of goes for Shaggy, but find out very soon whether it is or not. But I think we should have a bit more of the cool purple nuts, don't you? More prints? Oh, yeah, I think more we prints. should have a bit more yeah. prints. Is that, I, see, I can't actually say this week I've interviewed Prince, because I haven't. I would love to interview would you? Prince. I would love to go to Paisley Park. I would love to, like, hang out with him, play ping pong, whatever he does, and just, ping like... Pong. He does, doesn't does he? Gets Mel B went over to Paisley Park, and apparently they spent the entire time playing ping pong. How cool. How very it's cool. Prince. If you're going to play ping pong with somebody, you might as well play it with Prince. Prince. But <laughs> as well as being called Prince, in his time he has been called Camille, Alexander Nevermind, Jamie Starr, the artist formerly known as Prince, of course, and then Squiggly Symbol, thing, whatever. Squiggle. Symbol, Squiggle, whatever. Symbol. But he has always been the most chameleon like like attacker of the charts, has not he, basically? He's, he's a great, great artist. In, this, uh, in the year 1999, he parted like it was 1999, didn't he? But right now, we're going to take a walk with him for one of his best hits ever. This is Alphabet Street. There you go, Prince with Alphabet Street. You love him, don't I you? I think he is a god. Purple Rain, I have to say, I think he's my fave. Purple, I love Love Sexy as well. That was such a great... And then when he did Back Dance, do you remember that? No. For the Batman film? You must oh, yes, yes, that. yes, I do. That yes, was I do. so great. Yes, he's a top man. Prince. He certainly is a top man. Uh, when we come back after the break, we're going to find out who is this week's number one. Will it be Shaggy? Will it be Pipe Piper? I hope it's Shaggy, because I prefer oh. Shaggy. Which song do you prefer? Out of the two, I prefer Pipe Piper, but I quite like them both, yeah. it must be said. Shaggy or Pipe Piper? Shaggy! We're going to find out after the break who it is. And later on in the show, we're going to be repeating some of last week's talk about. So we will see you after For the break. Me, in winter, snuggling up in a warm duvet on a cold day. And then in summer, with the warm sun on your back. That's where it's at. Yay! You're watching where it's at. And this is Chad 
sack coming up in a moment. We're about to find out who is this week's number one. Ooh, don't who know, could it don't be? Know. Shall, I, shall I reveal all? Shall we reveal? Shall I Do reveal you want to all? know? Okay, it's that time every week where you find out who is number one. Let me tell you this week, he's done it. For a second week running, it's his second number one of the year. He's just all over the shop. I love him. The album's number one. You're loving him, but I bet the Pied Piper's not loving him, loving him, loving him, because they've kept them off the top spot yet again. Number one for the second week with Angel. It's Shaggy. Yeah. Again, for the second week, Shaggy is number one with Angel, and I like that. There is no stopping that man at the minute, is there? And you know what? Can I just say, while we've heard that song, my mum told me that that's a very old song, and I didn't yeah, know Angel that. Yeah, Angel of the Morning, it's covered. I didn't know that. Who sang it originally then? Uh, now you're testing me. I don't know. Mark, if you do, do you know, know, of course. No I, idea. Oh, did you Sorry. go to Mark? Because he's of a similar age. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that, Mark. Just happened to be the closest person. <laughs> but will he be number one next week? Find out with Charles Stack on Mayday next Sunday evening. Tune in tomorrow from 4 till 9 live. Lucy, Barney, LJ and Nolan, the whole team will be there tomorrow. They're looking at fashion and sport. Oh, yeah, that's Monday's Tuesday. Don't forget that it's all hot and horny sex talk on a Tuesday with Karen Krasanovich, our sex expert, and loads of other people. And Wednesday is Weird Wednesday. Last <laughs> week we had R2-D2 in the studio and lots of alien things going on. Uh, tune in for Weird Wednesday. Oh, yeah, take a walk on the weird side. Thursday is our Burning Issues Day. If you've got a serious issue to wear, Thursday is the day for you. And then Friday is a top night. It all kicks off with Have Fun Go Mad with Rick Adams and then Friday night, Stage Fright with Blair. We're back next Sunday. Thank for you Mayday, for watching. Four we'll see you then. Channel 461. Bye bye. bye. Brilliant time with the people that you care about is where it's at.